Hello everybody, it's um, Sunday and it's the 12th of July 2020 and uh, we're in a time where things seem to be easing a little uh, re our recent lockdown. Uh, some people think it's good, some people think it's bad. Uh, I like the idea it's, it is being more positive uh, but like many others I'm still a little cautious um i i do feel that the political need is uh, sort of taking over the reality of what we're actually dealing with and i just say people just have to think for themselves uh and uh but just be careful <laughs> i'm very pleased of course that uh in the entertainment industry um open air events are going to be open and uh, people can start working again. Uh, it's uh, only a question of time uh, before we can um, start going to theatres again. I'd very much like to think that uh, Pantos will be running this Christmas. But who knows? Who knows? Uh, but uh, there are lots of other things going on. So um, I personally just want to thank uh, Luke uh, Luke Sanford and his uh, Doctor Who Club in uh, New South Wales in Australia. Uh, we had a very good Zoom meeting uh, this week. Huge fun. And thank you very much for asking me along. Uh, I've had uh, several people sort of asking um, how they're going to cope with the situation. I've got uh, David here from Manchester. He says, none of the financial schemes to help me as self-employed uh, fitted. And so I've had no money for four months. What am I going to do? Well, I, I absolutely understand your plight. And for all self-employed people, uh, we didn't quite fit into... Uh, the boxes that were created and um, so we fall through the cracks. Uh, I do understand that people can get universal credit uh, but uh, you just need to go online and apply. Uh, if uh, Don't worry if you think you're too late um, because the system does allow you to backdate after a while. So that's my advice. There is something, uh, and something is better than nothing. Uh, also, uh, Angela from Taunton says, uh, I run a small company, but cannot afford to pay my workers once the furlough scheme has uh, come to a full stop. What can I do? Yes, um, for those of you outside our shores, the latest development on offer from our Chancellor of the Exchequer is, uh, quite rightly, uh, although it sticks in the gullet, I have to say, the furlough scheme can't go on forever. And uh, to encourage companies to take people back and pay for them uh, from the furlough scheme, there's this incentive that the companies will get a thousand pounds per employee but uh, as angela says here um a thousand pounds is very nice but won't cover the initial outlay which i haven't got <laughs> i perfectly understand perfectly understand uh, and really it's a juggle uh, i think uh, the furlough scheme is expensive but then how expensive is it going to be to have everybody unemployed and on universal credit? That's the number crunching that needs to take place until things get going. I honestly do believe things are going to get better and and things will be very different as well. And like everything in life, some people benefit and others don't. And the others don't is a much bigger group than I think the government would like to um, announce. Uh, what I will say, of course, there are the there have been these great announcements from the uh, government. I'm not going to criticise them because what they've done in the crisis moment has been good. Uh, but now they're going to want to grab the money back, and that's when people will turn and don't like them. Uh, but what this uh, scheme has highlighted is that it's a scheme put forward 
but not many people will actually be able to take it up. And I'm one of those who believes that the government knows that. So it's a little cynical. But, as I've said before, <laughs> do you pay for the furlough or do you pay for people to be unemployed? Uh, uh, and all I ask, if I, can, if I am in a position to ask, is that there are other proper, solid schemes out there to help everyone uh, to just get going. And uh, as somebody who's self-employed, um, I just want all the red tape taken out of the way and also a little more consideration um, because the self-employed in the old parlance aren't normal. <laughs> we never fit into the boxes that are drawn uh, and so there's always an argument and... Um, um, uh, I don't know what else to say there other than just take a deep breath uh, and uh, let's just see what happens. My real concern is once all the government schemes are taken away that there'll be some people kicked out of their houses because they either can't afford the rent or they can't keep up with the mortgage payments and that needs to be addressed immediately. Um, uh, but on a lighter note, let's not be too negative, on a lighter note, uh, some of you may have read the story, Julia Suwala, who's uh, well known from Absolutely Fabulous, she was the voice in Chicken Run, she played a, a chicken called Ginger, and uh, the original I think was, I can't remember, the year 2000 or something, uh, and there's going to be a sequel, Chicken Run 2, uh, but uh, she has been recast because the um, producers feel that her voice is now too old and this highlights something that I've uh, had to deal with uh, quite a lot in the past uh, reasons for not employing somebody in audio um, are the ones put forward are quite extreme and very silly and you can only laugh at an example that was given to me I was not cast, or I shall say I was cast, but then I was removed uh, because it was considered I was too large. And when I looked into it, uh, I said, but we're talking about radio here, which is audio, so physically no one will actually see me. And the voice at the other end of the phone said, oh yes, but Simon, you actually sound large. utter and complete bollocks that uh, us in lovedom have to deal with on many occasions <laughs> anyway on that note i decide being very large uh, uh wish you all the best for the future and just keep safe and be sensible so until my next vlog goodbye